Okay, now for these problems, um, you're going to have, remember that you're, you're going to have a rational function, and you could have a coefficient here, and um, you could have some x-intercepts. These parentheses depend on how many x-intercepts I have. Since I have two x-intercepts, I should have two parentheses here. And then, so remember, this is your x-intercepts. This is going to be your um, vertical asymptotes. And I have one vertical asymptote, so I'm gonna have one factor down here. So that's pretty much all you need for the basics on to know what the function is gonna look like. And then it's a matter of plugging in the values. So remember, in order for you to have, um, okay, let's do the x-intercepts first. So here we have 0, so this would be x minus 0. Here we have 2, so this would be x minus 2. And the vertical asymptote is at 1, so this would be x minus 1. Um, but what is interesting is that I notice that the horizontal asymptote is at 3. Now remember, your horizontal asymptote can only move from zero, go up or down, if the degree of the numerator was the same as the degree of the denominator, okay? So you obviously have an x to the one here and an x to the one there because it goes through there and through there. But this doesn't have an exponent and because there's one here and one here, that makes the numerator's degree 2. And because this is 3, or because it's not at 0 basically, um, that means this degree has to match that. So this one should be 2 as well. And then we already know that if this is at 3, then that's what this little coefficient should be. So it should be 3, and you don't have to write x minus 0, you can just write x. And you don't even need the parentheses actually you can just write it as 3x, x minus 2 with the power 1, and then x minus 1 squared. So you have to remember that the y asymptote equal to 3 means that the degree of the numerator has to equal the degree of the denominator. And since you have two factors upstairs, that means you have to have two factors downstairs, which is why there's a square there now, okay? And then that 3 will become that a value, okay? So now let's do the same thing for this. Now this is a very similar problem. The only difference here is instead of giving it to me in an image, they gave it to me in a sentence, okay? But I'm still going to be calculating the same information. So here, I mean, and if you want to graph it on your paper, you most certainly can. It says I have intercepts of negative 3, so 1, 2, 3, here's an x-intercept, and uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there's another x-intercept. It's telling me I have a y-intercept of 0 and 18. I'm not going to go all the way down there. I'm just going to say that's negative 18. Um, and then you have a vertical asymptote at 1. And then you have a horizontal asymptote at 1. Okay. And so then um, I'm pretty sure because this point is down here that this is going to go like this. And because these points are already here, this is going to go like that. So you pretty much have an image. Um, but let's figure out how we're going to figure out what that uh, um, function looks like. So you are going to have some coefficient there. And you do need, you have two x-intercepts, so you're going to have two bubbles here. And you only have one vertical asymptote, so you're going to have one bubble down there. Now this crosses through here and crosses through there. So if I cross through negative 3, that means x plus 3 with the power 1. And if I cross through 6, that means x minus 6 with a positive 1. Now here it says I have a horizontal asymptote of 1. Again, if it's not 0, that means that the degree of the numerator had to equal the degree of the denominator. And since I've got two up there, it means I'm gonna have to have two down here. And it's at one, so inside the parentheses should be x minus one. 
And I do know what this value should be. It should be a one because the horizontal asymptote is one. So now I know what my function looks like. It'll just have a one, which I don't have to write. X plus three, X minus six over um, X minus one squared. Now you can always double check using your y-intercepts. So here, my y-intercept is zero. What happens if I plug in zero for all the x's? Don't I get zero times this over this? Zero times anything is zero over anything is still zero. And that is the y-intercept. If I look at this one, my y-intercept is negative 18. If I plug in zero here, I get three. If I plug in zero here, I get negative six. And if I plug in zero here, I get negative one squared. So three is negative six is negative 18. And then negative one squared is a positive one. Negative 18 over positive one is in fact negative 18. So you can use your y-intercept just to double check that you have the correct um, function there. But that's it for this um, kinds of examples and that's actually it for 3.5 so we've now done all of chapter 3 so again my recommendation is to get the chapter 2 and chapter 3 all the graphing stuff out of the way do the review and the test first don't wait till Sunday that way you can shift your mindset into learning the new material in chapter 4 um, what I don't want you to do is start doing chapter 4 and then now you've got all that information stirred in with the chapter two and three information and then you're more likely to get just blank and all kinds of things happens when you start to cram more stuff into your brain um, in a short period of time. So I would much rather you do the review, do the test first before moving on to chapter four. But again, I can't force you to do anything. It's completely up to you. As long as you meet the deadlines, you're well within your right to go on ahead to chapter four and then do the test by Sunday. Um, I'm just only giving you my recommendation what I would have done personally. So keep that in mind and keep pushing through all of this material. You're about halfway through, a little bit more than halfway through actually, um, and you will get there. So that is the end of this one.